Sugar the Play, a cash team production, is looking for actors and singers to fill several slots for this upcoming live play. For more information, please call 216-394-8926. That's Sugar the Play, auditions at 216-394-8926. There is time and there are moments in time. Today is one of those moments. We have a very, very special guest with us today, joining us here on Talk Back Live, none other than Dr. George C. Frazier, well-known entrepreneur, uh, lecturer, speaker, entrepreneur, best-selling author. We've got him right here today on Talk Back Live. Welcome today to Talk Back Live, Dr. George Frazier. Welcome, sir. It is good to be with you, Gloria. Boy, you're still at it. You're still kicking and you're kicking high. Well, you sound <laughs> great. You look great. You're full of energy. Your passion. Well, thank you. you it's an honor to be with you. Sir, you are gracing us with your knowledge, your wisdom, and we are so thankful to have you here with us on Talk Back Live. We're going to get right down to the meat of everything, and we're, we're so thrilled to have you share with our viewers today uh, some of your golden nuggets. Not enough time for you to share all of them, of course. There's too many uh, to name, but some of your, some of your golden nuggets, nuggets we'd like you to share with our viewers today. Before we, I let you get started with that, 
uh, there is a uh, saying that I understand that you're very, very fond of by the rapper Drake. And it said, it goes something like started from the bottom. Now we're here. And uh, tell us, how did you become so fond of that? I love the, the, the uh, adage, but how did you become so attached to that? Well, it's sort of in, in you know, less than 10 words, the story of life. We, we all start as a, as a seed and uh, we uh, cultivate the seed, we nourish the seed, we water the seed. And then the seed flowers and bears fruit in great abundance if you do the right thing, if you have the right formulas. Of course, you can starve a seed and it will not grow and it will not flower. So start it from the bottom, start it from a seed, right? Exactly. Uh, now, now I'm here and now life is, uh, you know, as I like to say, uh, you're born looking like your parents, but you die looking like your choices. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So you've traveled the world. Uh, you've been hailed as one of the best African-American speakers uh, known in the world. That's a heck of a title to carry. And you've earned it most definitely. But I want to start off by asking you specifically, because you have a passion for your information that you share in the African-American community. And I wanted to ask you specifically and start off with this question. The African-American economic situation or community in the Africa, the economic peril uh, in the African community, are you surprised by it uh, in 2021? Yeah, I am surprised that the gap between blacks and whites in terms of wealth has increased over the last 50 years and not has decreased. It's because we have some very bad habits that we need to fix and that is that we are probably the most financially illiterate people in America. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, to be black and powerful in this world means nothing uh, unless you have money. Money basically is, is power. Uh, so let me say it a different way. To be black and beautiful means nothing in this world unless you have power. Uh, we, and, and I'm going to say this and still be loved. We cannot be black and proud and niggas too. Uh, white folks are planning for three generations and we are planning for Saturday night. Um, it is amazing to me uh, that, that uh, we are not doing what we need to be doing and we need to get educated. That's one of the reasons I've spent a huge chunk of my later career, I'm 76 now, focusing on financial education through our WINS Wealth Building Centers and curriculum and installing um, systems for learning about money uh, in the historically Black church. There's about 85,000 Black churches in America, about 10,000 of them have wealth ministries they need to be upgraded and, and improved. And as I say all the time to business people, if you don't have a system, you don't have a business. Everything is a system so that you can replicate, duplicate, and scale it. So we developed a system. But financial education is the key. Um, and then there's something what I call the four pillars for the intergenerational transfer of wealth. And the first pillar is proper management of accumulated wealth so that we can stop reading about athletes and entertainers who earn millions of dollars in their career. And within five years of retirement, they're either broke or in bankruptcy. Bankruptcy, right? That is the improper management of accumulated wealth. There are 2 million Black households uh, worth $400,000 or more. Most of that's tied up in real estate, um, but we're not properly managing that wealth. So that really is a function of education. We have to focus on education. I think that's one of the huge focuses in the 21st century for us. And I'm hoping that by the end of the 21st century, we will make a significant uh, uh, progress in closing the gap between black people and white people. Uh, but people ask me all the time, Gloria, how long will this take? I think it's going to take 100 years. I think it's going to take three to five generations. I just think they're going to have to be some folks that die because they just don't get it and they won't get it. And, they're, and, and, and you know, I don't mean to sound hard, but I'm just being realistic. I'm trying to keep it real. This is what is going to have to happen and we're going to have to do it. So thank you for asking that question. It's a deep question. Um, as I say to brothers and sisters all the time when I speak to them on this subject, um, the goal is to win, not to look like we're winning. Uh, 
I would rather carry a plastic bag with $5,000 in it than to carry a $5,000 Louis Vuitton bag with $100 of it in it right you're not winning louis vuitton is winning amani is winning gucci is winning versace is winning black people are not winning. we absolutely have, yeah we have to fix that they ain't fixing that nobody fixing black people but black people white people are not even thinking about us right you know who white people are thinking about they're thinking about white people they're thinking about their husbands their wives their children their neighborhoods their businesses and your pockets right that's what they're thinking about So we have to do the same thing. We must think about ourselves, recycle our dollars, get smart about how we invest our money, take advantage of the the new opportunities like cryptocurrency, but you got to get educated about it. You got to do it with people who are intelligent about that new financial opportunity. So that's, you know, that's the 30,000 foot view of it. That's real. That's a great question. And it's one of the great big objectives and goals for black people in the 21st century. You've traveled the world. You've met all sort of celebrities, uh, all sort of noble uh, people all over the world. I was so curious when you agreed to come on to Talk Back Live to ask you, who influenced you most? Any wow. one in particular, or, or there's just a slew yeah, of yeah. folks that have influenced you? To be you. candid with you, yeah, yeah, to be candid with you, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, in bed right? Um, and they say if you're from bed in Brooklyn, you're either a thug or a gangster, right? I've I'm heard a, that. I'm a gangster, right? I'm a gangster, make no mistake about it. But I grew up, uh, you know, I was born in 1945, so I grew up in the heyday of the civil rights movement, where there was creative tension between Malcolm X and Dr. Martin Luther King. And I listened to both of them. Malcolm had a profound influence on me. In fact, I was afraid almost to listen to Malcolm. I was just one of those kids on the streets of Harlem listening to him on a soapbox. He was very persuasive and very influential. The other person that was right about the same time was Stokely Carmichael. Stokely Carmichael was a boss-to-the-wall revolutionary. And Stokely Carmichael said many, many incredible things. He was charismatic. He was sort of a younger version of Malcolm. And by the way, he was also highly influenced by Malcolm X. But Stokely Carmichael said something in the 60s that has stayed with me throughout my entire life life, and has essentially made me a race man. And a race man or a race woman is someone who have invested their time, talent, and treasure into the uh, upliftment of his or her own people first. And here's what Stokely said. He said that no Black person in this country makes any advancement solely based on his or her talent or worth. All individual advancement is based on mass struggle. We make no progress in this world without shedding our blood. And then he went on to say, therefore, your advancement and success does not belong to you. It belongs to the people. And if you don't use your success or advancement for the benefit of your people, it's a betrayal of your people, the people that have shed their blood for you. I thought that was deep and profound. Profound. I have committed my time, talent, and treasure into the investment and upliftment of our own people first. I didn't say only. I said First, so influences, Stokely Carmichael. There have been many others. My father was a great influence, Malcolm X. But in terms of my personal philosophy, uh, how I comport myself, what my focus is, they were shaped and molded by continually listening to what Malcolm had to say and what Stokely Carmichael had to say. Dr. King was an influence, too. He was in a different space. And Marcus Garvey. I think Marcus Garvey was the greatest leader. Yeah, yeah. Black people. I'm I'm going to ask you about Marcus Garvey on the second half of the show. Uh, Listening to you uh, just brings so many things to my mind. And you did mention uh, Martin Luther King, but studying you 
and knowing some of your history, Mm -hmm. I can see why you said Malcolm X was a great influence on your life because, and I must share this with you personally, myself, as I get older, Mm. I became more fond of Malcolm X. I realized that his philosophies Mm. and his his way, he had his own system, so to speak. You talk about systems. His system was different than Martin Luther King Jr.'s. Yeah. But I have come to appreciate his system more as I have gotten older. And 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 I can see through studying your life that certainly you've taken uh, some pages out of uh, out of his book. And I can see why, because your passion for your for the community, for the African-American community, for your own uh, people uh, has thrust you into uh, all sorts of realms all over the world. And it shows, believe me, believe me. I wanted to also ask you, sir. Dreamers. Martin Luther King Jr. was a dreamer. Malcolm X was a dreamer, but he was a realist as well. Are we losing the dreamers today, in your opinion? Um, Boy, that's a profound question. So I have to be uh, honest with you. Please. Yes. The, The short answer to your question is yes. Those are the ones, especially for us, as Jesse so simply said for many years, those are the ones that keep hope alive uh, in our culture and in our community. They are the visionaries. They point the direction of where we must look and where we must go. They shape, help shape the future and give all of us a vision for which we aspire to. Who are they today? Who are they? Who are those dreamers? Who's talking like that? Who talked like Dr. King? Who talk? Who talks like Malcolm? Who's talking like Stokely? Or who's talking like Marcus Garvey? Who are they? I haven't seen them. I haven't heard them. I haven't found them. Now, maybe it's just a different time and a different era and... The dreaming is articulated in a different way. Much of the dreaming that I experience from our people are through books. There are a lot more of us writing today than ever before, right? Not enough of us reading. More of us are reading than ever before. But, you know, it's it's the adage of if you want to hide something from a black man, put it in a book. I've heard that. Right. Still still applies so but but the physical figurative um dreamer Mm -hmm. i can't point to them the person the woman uh the man Mm -hmm. who has the 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 guts to say it like and tell us this is where we need to be going. This and is loved and respected uh, and cherished, in a sense, by their people. I don't know who that is, Gloria. I just want to be honest. I don't know who that is today. All right. We have none other than Dr. George C. Frazier right here on Talk Back Live. We're going to take a break right now, and we'll catch her on the other side. Stay tuned. Sugar the Play, a cash team production, is looking for actors and singers to fill several slots for this upcoming live play. For more information, please call 216-394-8926. That's Sugar the Play, auditions at 216-394-8926. Welcome back to Talk Back Live. Our special guest today is none other than George, Dr. George C. Frazier. And we're so excited to have him today and share his precious time with us here on Talk Back Live. It's such an honor to have him. Uh, everywhere he goes, he shares uh, so much wisdom and knowledge and power. So we're grateful to have him. Uh, we are also 
coming to you from the city of Cleveland. Uh, and we are also co-producers of a play called Sugar the Stage Play coming up in the spring of uh, 2022. If you are an experienced stage actor, actress, if you have experience, and even if you are a diamond in the rough and maybe you're unexperienced, give us a call here at 216-394-8926. That's 216-394-8926. That's Sugar the Stage Play. Look for it. It's coming. All right, Dr. Frazier, so great to have you with us. Such a great conversation to start the show, sir. And I, we just don't have enough time to talk to you about everything that I would love to talk to you about. Uh, 30 minutes is never enough time with you, sir. Uh, let's be real about that. And uh, we talked about dreamers. I wanted to ask you that because I feel the same way as you. Um, may I ask you, what have been some of your greatest loves? I know family is precious. Uh, I know you're a father, you're a husband, you're a father, you're a grandfather. And uh, what have been some of your greatest loves? I know family is right there at the top, and I know you're a spiritual man. I know God is head of your life. Um, but what are some of the other things uh, that uh, you have fallen in love with? Um, wow. Wow. You asked the greatest questions. Uh, I have fallen in love with love. The whole idea of love. Um, it's just because it's a never ending quest because we, we love at so many different levels, Gloria, right? We love our, our, our spouses. We love our children. We love our work. Right. I love my work. People ask me all the time, Dr. Fraser, how do you work 10, 12 hours every single day? And I said, well, to you, it looks like work. Right. Me, this is what I love. I right. Love in fact, I'm on vacation when I'm doing the work that I love. Yes. And I love it because I live life on the edge. Because yes. that's where life is, Gloria, on yes. the edge. Yes. You must walk to the edge, brothers and sisters. Jump off and grow your wings on the way down. And you'll learn and you'll grow. And, and so that's, that's, you know, so, so I'm in love with loving the fact that man, I am doing that which gives me the greatest fulfillment, the greatest joy, and the greatest satisfaction. And that is the work I'm doing for my family, for my legacy, for my people. It just doesn't get any better than this. And I'm, you know, and I'm nearly 77. Well, you and, look marvelous. Yeah, if I may say so. Marvelous. And I'm still marvelous. kicking, Gloria, and I'm kicking <laughs> Marvelous. So, that's a wonderful question. And, um, and, and yet, and I can think of people in my past that I've loved and have wondered what they were doing. For example, I'll just give you a quick example. There's a lady, you don't know her, but her name is Margot. Margot John. Margot was my first love in Brooklyn when I was an 18 year old teenager, right? So you never forget your first love. And so about a year ago, Margo and I got back in touch with each other. And I said, Margo, how in the hell are you? What have you been doing? She said, well, I've been raising my son. I said, that's beautiful. I said, did you get married? She said, well, yeah, I did get married, but I'm divorced now. But I'm spending a lot of time with raising my son. I said, well, who's your son? She said, you might know him. His name is Damon John. I said, Damon John with Shark Tank? That's your son? Yeah. Jeez. Right, right. So, and then we had a long conversation about the old days. And of course, we made it very, she made it very clear. There's nothing to worry about. <laughs> right? Um, so, so you were, you know, you, you, uh, I love thinking about old friends. I, I love thinking about the work that I do. And, uh, and th th that's some of what I 
those are my greatest loves, my work, my family, my, you know, my legacy that I won't enjoy my legacy. Hopefully succeeding generations will enjoy my legacy, whatever that may be. I'll be dead. I'm just working on it so that others can enjoy it, hopefully. So uh, that's a wonderful philosophical question that you ask, and I, you know, very few people uh, are even smart enough to ask that question. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm going to follow up with this question. What would you say to the viewers out there who, unfortunately, at this particular time in their life, they're not able to live their dream. They're not able to live their passion. What would you say to that? Um, I mean, maybe they've got a dream. They want it. It's on the back burner. It's in them, but they've got to work this nine to five job. They've got to pay bills. Yes. Uh, I, I'm going to recite a, something a, a tad philosophical, but I think it's practical. And it's, I'm going to answer the most important question in life that I'm asked all the time. And it applies to this question that you're asking me. And the question I'm asked all the time, Dr. Fraser, what is the meaning of life? And I look at people with a pregnant pause and I say to them, life has no meaning. You have meaning and you bring it to life. So it is crazy to ask the question when in fact you are the answer. So that's part A. Part B is self-talk and asking yourself the question, what gives you the greatest fulfillment, the greatest joy, and greatest satisfaction? What would you do all day long, even if nobody paid you to do it? Well, there are seeds. There are seeds in you. You were, you were sent here for a reason. Your task is to find out that reason. That's your task. Get off off your butt and find out and there are lots of little signals and you try many things and you fail fast and you go to the next thing and it will ultimately be revealed to you so if you want to actualize a dream said simply gloria you have to wake up wake <laughs> up live on the edge Ask yourself the questions. Everything you want in life is on the other side of heart. Ah, I love right? it. Right? If I it was, love it. Right? If it was easy, why would God ah. do you? Right? Oh, my. So take responsibility. It's in there. You're here for a reason. You have a limited amount of time. Yes, sir. Right? Act on it and act like you want it. Before we close, Dr. Frazier, I have to ask you this. I don't have a lot of time, but I have to ask you this. Uh, Pre-Reconstruction era, um, there were Marcus Garvey. Uh, there was Frederick Douglass. Uh, there was W.E.B. Du Bois. Harriet Tubman. Harriet, Harriet Tubman. Tubman and uh, Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey had his system, much like Malcolm X, and W.E.B. Du Bois had his system. Yes, Share with my viewers, and certainly with me, because I'm dying to hear your answer on this, which influenced, had the most influence, and which most affected your theories? Yes. Well, first of all, Du Bois, the first PhD from Harvard, black PhD graduate from Harvard, was brilliant one of the most brilliant minds in America at that time, not just black. But absolutely that, absolutely and uh, he uh, his writings the souls of black folk are just classic and you need to everybody every black person needs to read that book that needs to be on your short reading list it's brilliant he did not like mark scarby <laughs> right right i, I know the story they were on opposite ends of the philosophical opposite ends. perspective yeah. a perspective uh, yes. Boy thought Garvey was uh, a charlatan. Yes. Yes. Uh, Carnival Barker. Um, but he was not. 
Look what Garvey did in organizing nearly 3 million Black people without the internet, without fax machines, etc. He was brilliant, a brilliant yes. orator, um, a motivator, uh, yes. and one who executed on his dreams and his visions. Yes. Uh, Marcus Garvey had the most influence on me between the two. Now, at the end of the day, Gloria... <laughs> The boy left America yes. to go and to live in Accra, Ghana. There's a big monument to W.E.B. Du Bois in Accra. And when he was in Africa, he admitted that Marcus Garvey was right. right? Yes, that yes. Marcus Garvey had the right idea. Yes. Garvey, uh, Garvey wanted us to, basically, he was a more aggressive and... yes. And he, and he taught us to do things on our terms. He taught us to do it on our terms. Uh, yeah. I, 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 sir, I, I, 30 minutes is never enough time to spend time with you. You have blessed me beyond measure uh, today. And I want to thank you for your precious time and for your wisdom and for your knowledge. So many more things I'd love to talk to you about maybe another time. Another time. Uh, and, part two. Part two, absolutely. If you come back, we will we'll certainly have you back. And I just want to say thank you so much, sir. And uh, well, you've got some exciting news. Also, it looks like you've got a very special anniversary event coming up uh, August the 3rd through the 6th of uh, next year in Houston, Texas. It's, it looks like it's your 21st anniversary. You created this 21 years ago. You're the producer and the host of the Power Networking Conference. That's coming up August 3rd through the 6th, and that's of 2022. Don't miss it. Catch it. Go online. Go onto his website. Register. Uh, it's going to be held in the beautiful city of Houston, Texas, and it's coming up August 3rd through the 6th. Uh, sir, thank you, Dr. George C. Frazier. None like you, sir. Keep doing God's work. Love you. Take care. Thank you. All right now. And to the viewers, stay with us there, Dr. Frazier, and be sure and tune in. Uh, to our next show. We've got another special guest coming up in two weeks from today. We will have none other than Eric Nolan uh, here, member of the OJs. Uh, all Clevelanders are very familiar and all over the world of the mighty, mighty OJs. We're going to have him right here on Talk Back Live. He's coming up November 13th at 1130 a.m. right here. Don't miss it. Until next time, America. Just like a That's a wrap. Hope you enjoyed the show today. Be sure and go to our Facebook page, Talk Back, a thought-provoking talk format. That's Talk Back, a thought-provoking talk format. Leave us a review. Let us know what you think of Talk Back. It can only make us better. Be sure to check us out on Spotify, also Twitter, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, wherever podcasts are heard. Be sure to check us out on YouTube. Again, thank you for listening. Until next time, America. You have been listening to Talk Back with my grandma on Spotify. Be sure and catch her every weekend. Oh, and by the way, my name is Kari. Bye.